In the previous video, we demonstrated two methods for machining the open pockets on this part. This video will cover a third method, which will use the stock as the machining region. If you are continuing from the previous video, adjust the stock back to its original size. Create a copy of the last dynamic toolpath. We will be adjusting both the geometry and cutting options for this operation. Click on the Parameters tab to open the operation for editing. Switch to the Toolpath Type page so changes can be made to the geometry. Clear all the selections. The machining region will be left blank. This allows the defined stock to be set as the machining region. And change the strategy to From Outside. This strategy allows the toolpath to cut the entire block of stock. Now, we just need to tell it where not to cut, referring back to the wireframe videos. This was done by using avoidance regions. Let's pick some avoidance regions now. Start by selecting all six faces of the outside pockets. Switch to Face Selection only and select each face. Click OK and we're taken back to the toolpath menu. Click OK to exit the operation and regenerate it. From this result, you can see the toolpath is not what we're after. It has not picked up any depths from the selected faces. The depths come from the machining regions chains, of which there are none. And the toolpath is completely avoiding the pockets instead of cutting them. A few changes to the operation are needed. Open the parameters again. First, our operation needs depth. On the linking parameters page, switch depth to absolute, since we are no longer relying on the depth of the chained machining region. Click the depth button and then pick the bottom corner of either the left or the right pocket. This is the deepest any cut in the operation would need to be. The next setting needed is on the Depth Cuts tab. Given the style of chaining we are doing, basically creating islands inside of the stock for the toolpath to avoid. Island facing will need to be enabled to allow cutting on top of these islands. The settings inside of the island facing can be left at the default values. If we exit and regenerate the operation again, the toolpath is closer but still not what we're after. It is now cutting above the six pocket faces, but it is also machining the rest of the part. Another avoidance region is required. Open the chaining options again and click the avoidance region selector. Right click the chain manager window and choose add chain. We need to select the top face of the part. However, if we choose the face selection option, Clicking the top face of the part will result in the chains on not only the outer loop of the face, but all the circles and pockets within it. To grab just the outside edge of this face, switch to the loop selection. Then click on the outside edge. Click OK, exit the operation again, and regenerate the toolpath. The cut is now much closer to what we're after. Only issue is that it is cutting the top face. We wanted just the pockets. If we alter the top of the stock on the linking parameters page, we can change the starting depth of this toolpath. Click the top of stock button and select a point on the top face of the part. Exit and regen the operation again. Now we have the desired toolpath. This toolpath combines the flexibility of being able to use stock extensions and the speed of the toolpath creation by selecting faces instead of open loops. To check the operation's availability to adapt to stock, enlarge the stock size again. Since the stock is defining the machining region, having stock larger than the selected avoidance regions will result in an all additional stocks being cut, not just extending an open toolpath to the stock. Set the stock back to the original size. In the next video, we will machine the remaining faces and pockets and start diving into some of the cut parameters inside the 2D dynamic toolpath.